Hey, welcome back to part three of our three-part series on how to repair a CRT TV. So to recap, our resident genius Kraz has uh, done a lot of work on the CRT TV. Uh, part one was testing the tube. So he tested the tube to see uh, how much life was left on the guns and make sure the flyback still worked and all of the essential elements that are pretty much irreplaceable. So if we did these tests and any of that stuff was um, beyond repair, it wouldn't make sense to do anything further because you know the guns and the flyback and stuff's not, not worth even attempting to repair at that point. So those things checked out just fine, which was great. Uh, part two, of uh, our video number two, Kraz, our resident genius, tested the um, capacitors. As you remember from part one, one of the capacitors just fell off. So obviously that one was bad, but um, Kraz did some testing to see uh, which other ones might need to be replaced, made a list, got those replacements. And now in part three, gonna install those replacements and see where we're at. Um, you'll find it doesn't solve all of our problems. So um, contrary to popular belief, just recapping isn't uh, fix all for everything. So you'll see that it solves some of the problems, but not all of it. Um, and then we'll, uh, Kraz will do some investigation and see what could be the problem for, for the remaining issues. And to go over the issues again, it's vertical collapse of the screen, uh, contrast issues, and uh, the button, uh, color auto color button on the front does not work. So uh, we'll get all that solved in this final video. Check it out. And now we are going to actually replace some caps. Uh, so I actually did the, uh, the test. Um, well, these guys all test okay. So, but this one doesn't test good. And this one obviously is bad. So we're gonna replace these two. Um, I really don't like the look of this one and this one and these two. So I might just do these four also. Um, but let's do these two. Uh, clean up the board and then just get these off of there. So, <clears throat> uh, since we uh, almost know what we're doing, uh, we're gonna we're gonna use a desoldering gun to do this. Um, and it is an absolutely terrible idea to do this one-handed. But um, yeah, we're gonna just clean up the trace here on this guy. There we go. And then. Uh, this was the this was the the one that popped out um and then c442 uh c442 is a 1000 microfarad that's that's testing very low so that one's going bye bye also It does test low. Um, I have to clean this up a bit because it is it did leak. Uh, however, this is the top of the board, and there are no traces there, and the bottom of the board does not seem to be affected. But anyway, um, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just uh, get these guys off too, just because it's fun to use tools. On this board, the negative is always indicated with this white uh, dash here. Um, and on the back of the PCD, you can also confirm it. And the plus is now indicated, and the positive side is always indicated. And on a cap, um, 
it's usually pretty obvious what the negative side is but if it's not uh, i've seen also sometimes the wrap the wrapper the label on the cap itself is not aligned with the pins so another good way to know is the long when they're, when they're brand new of course the long lead is the positive and the short lead is the negative because I don't know, you got the short end of the stick or something. I don't know, it's positive is the big one and negative is the short one. Make it that what you will. Um, but we're gonna find your own mnemonic. I don't know. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a way of dealing with uncertainty. Um, so we're gonna put these guys in there. So that's a 470 at 200 volts, and then we had a, we had a 1,000 amp, 1,000 microfarads, 1,000, 1,000. What did it give me at the store? They gave me a forever cap. Ooh, 85. Okay, so oh wow, this is uh, one of those 40 percent. Wow, this is a really crappy cap, actually. Thank you very much, uh, local electronics store. You. Uh, Definitely uh, did not deliver on that one. I mean, how, how out of spec is this thing? Okay, 1,000 microfarads. I'm not expecting miracles here, but... Um, 956 microfarads, hey, that's not so bad. Speaking of... Um, caps that are out of spec. So this tested in circuits was testing at 200 microfarads. Um, and <clears throat> sometimes in circuits is extremely misleading, but uh, uh, well, let's just find out. 2 point, 1 point. Okay, so it basically doesn't know what's going on. So this is a bad cap, 58. Yeah, this is, this is nowhere near a thousand microfarads. Okay, so we fired up the old Hako 936, um, put it to seven, four, seven, yeah. it's tacked on there. That's, that's something. All right, so we got soldered. Um, we're just gonna the room um so we're just gonna replace those two caps because these are out of all the caps that are in the uh deflection section uh this is really the only ones that are that are bad and there we have our brand new capacitors c442 nice and shiny c443 nice all right we put the tv on the bench uh it's a very crowded bench now we're going to rehook it. Let's put this back in the TV. I don't know, we changed the caps. I don't expect the partial deflection issue, vertical, partial deflection, partial vertical collapse to be fixed. However, I do expect um, the contrast issue on the left side to be fixed. Put this back. Neck board. There you go. I'm gonna put this back here. Of course, we're doing this one-handed because that's a lot more fun that way. stuff first so what we do um, so this connector which went all the way back there and then uh this TV is pretty easy to reconnect everything since every plug essentially is unique yeah it would also help if I uh, plugged it in there we go lined up and then we have this is the ground from the um, 
neck board. It's very important, otherwise you get the, the crackles. Yes. Um, we got, we got these guys, so this is our control, yeah, this is deeper there, and this power, and we got this, uh, more controls, um, they look like buttons on the front of the TV, okay, and then we've got your tunner. Input and this is the power switch. This is all the way back there. We've got our degauss coil. And degauss coil which connects here. Very important ground wire here. That's on the CRT wire. And then we got um, what looks like a headphone jack. Uh, okay, we got uh, most of the plugs back in. Oh, of course, the most important, the yoke. The yoke. We are reconnecting this guy down here. This should be only pluggable in one way, but not the other. There we go. That's good. Uh, Cat, which uh, I'm gonna have to do two-handed because that is just uh, that is just too painful to do one hand way. Um, okay, just usually try to get that wire away from other stuff since it is carrying 22,000 volts. <clears throat> Wouldn't want the insulation to start failing on us and just zapping everything, everything in the way. Okay, uh, we got the anode cap, we've got the yoke, uh, we've got various uh, control board connectors. RF connector, we've got the degauss coil, we've got the power switch, we've got these control things. And there is one more ground wire, which I will do off camera most likely. It seems like it's gonna be too much of a pain in the butt. It's another it's another ground wire. I looked at it earlier and uh, funny because it is actually labeled as the CRT Earth. It's very good, monkey ward. Nice labels. So we'll do that. And then we'll power the TV and we'll see what happens. You're right, we are ready to power this thing on. Things are not blowing up yet. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so we still have the vertical deflection issue. Um, but we no longer have the problem with the dark side on the left. All right, so we did hook up something to this thing. And uh, in the process of reconnecting things, uh, we actually fixed the deflection issue. Uh, so now we have full sweep uh, vertically, as you can see, and we did not have to tweak any pots. So now this TV is uh, almost fully fixed. So <clears throat> the ver vertical deflection actually problem came uh, not from a component that was bad, 
but from the yoke uh, connector here that was uh, either dirty or uh, unseated or the uh, the inside of the plug was uh, was dirty and uh, or, or, or crooked and so unseating and reseating it a few times actually ended up fixing the problem uh, I guess uh, some parasitic resistance was making it so that it couldn't get the full the full uh, deflection and um, that was it just uh, plugging and unplugging the deflection uh, yoke plug was all it took to get the uh, problem fixed of course before I did that I um, needlessly replaced uh, all of the vertical section capacitors and uh, doing that uh, fixed absolutely nothing uh, but I knew that this was not going to help because I had tested most of these uh, as you saw in the video and most of these capacitors or all of these capacitors actually were fine so changing them didn't change the problem uh, it was really just the plug over here um, that's interesting because if we go back to this little thing, it does mention <coughs> that um, it could be possibly a bad capacitor or a bad connection. And that was in fact the problem. It was a bad connection. That was our problem for this uh, vertically squashed vertical deflection issue. So read these carefully. The TV FAC, very useful resource. Um, always try the easiest first. Plugging and unplugging this is a lot easier than spending your life away recapping the board. <clears throat> so always try the easy fix first. Don't 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 do like me and recap in desperation. Even though you know you tested those and you know that they were good. Okay, so try the easy fix first. It's a lot simpler. So anyway, we do have one more problem left on this TV. Um, this button here, auto color, does not work. When we turn off auto color right now, you can actually see that the colors are popping because I just cranked it all the way up. But this is supposed to make it, uh, including the tint uh, and color balance, just fine. And it's also supposed to light up this LED here. Now. It does work um, if you sort of um, see that. See that? There you go. Now, so now it doesn't work, and that works. Yeah, yeah. So now it works. <clears throat> and the LED is lighting up, and then the colors good. They're not oversaturated. The tint is good. Um, there's really uh, so to fix. It looks like again another connector issue. All I do is it's this connector. Come on, it's just a jungle of wires here. Um, it's this connector back there. Yes, it's this one right there. When I pull on it, it works. Um, and yeah, if I just kind of whack the TV, it just goes away or I just pull again on it. So it looks like there is a problem with the connector. Possibly a dry solder joint, possibly the connectors inside of that plug are failing. Uh, hard to tell. But again, <clears throat> when you're dealing with 30, 35, 40 years old electronics or even older, um, some of these connectors are definitely getting a little loose or there's dirt uh, somehow that have accumulated inside and you get weird problems like this. So. Physical connections are, in fact, important. Um, but I just um, play some games. So this TV is working good. Uh, we are we are in business here. And this is, there's, so there's nice geometry on this. Um, very nice geometry. Very nice uh, convergence all around. Sharp. Uh, sharp. We can even see scan lines. Uh, so this is connected using RF. Uh, we have absolutely no noise in the picture. I am, I am perhaps cheating uh, because I am using a, 
uh, UHF modulator here uh, and a comb filter. So we've got the, uh, the composite out coming out of this uh, going into the comm filter and then outputting S video, which then goes into our UHF model modulator as S video and then gets modulated out as UHF uh, here, which goes into the UHF tunner. So this TV has two tunners. There's a VHF tunner here. There's a plug for VHS and a, pl a plug for VHF, very high frequency, and a plug for UHF, uh, ultra high frequency. Uh, and so this is going into the UHF. <clears throat> and then so uh, we can compare the picture uh, with the UHF because I've, I've hooked up the I've hooked up the console to both UHF and VHF right now. So the native uh, VHF output on channel three. Uh, is a little noisier, obviously, as you can see. You can see the uh, typical sort of uh, low grade, and it's not bad. It's definitely a usable picture, but when you pay attention, you can see that there's definitely some noise here. Uh, and now if we switch to um, our UHF channel, um, there is zero noise. The picture is very stable, very bright, very colorful. Um, this is as good as it gets uh, for composites on a TV that is 34 years old, uh, 35 years old. So, yeah. I mean, it's just this excellent picture quality. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I'm just gonna clean the, just wipe the screen. And all it took to fix this TV was uh, two capacitors. Um, and reseeding the uh, the yoke plug. We so we are going to reflow this connector here uh, that was causing the auto collar button. It's it's this one right here. I, it doesn't look like any of these are dry joints or broken. Uh, it's hard to tell. I'm just gonna do it because I already made the effort. Uh, it possibly this here. I'm hoping it's. The trace is, you know, it doesn't look great uh, here. Um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna double check these because uh, I, I, there's no reason that just wiggling the plug uh, would cause it to fail, other than uh, bad connection here at this in this area. Um, it is possible also the springiness of each of the. Uh, uh, the contact inside are, are bad um, and I did look inside and uh, it looks like some of them are perhaps you know we can kind of see them inside and I did I did um, got these out um, pulled them out each of the individual metallic contacts and then bend them back out and it didn't help. So some things the matter here. I'm not sure what. Um, I don't think it's the plug. I think it's the I think it's the connector on the board uh, right here that needs resoldering. So we're gonna do that, and then uh, hopefully that'll fix it. Okay. Okay. So we have put perhaps too much solder on these, but um, we did reflow it with fresh, uh, clean solder. I mean, the solder was already pretty clean on this. Um, didn't matter too much, but um, this one and this one look like they had dry, dry joints on them and perhaps some cracking here uh, in the center. And that's all it takes sometimes just to, to get the wiggle. Uh, you just wiggle the, con the connector and then it goes bad. <clears throat> so, Nice and shiny on each of those, uh, uh, and um, these are definitely solid now. So we're gonna we're gonna hook it up and see what happens. But I think that uh, looking at this very closely, yes, there was cracking here uh, and possibly on number one here. So this may explain um, the loss of auto collar correction when we wiggle that particular plug. 
and we're gonna confirm that right now. And uh, yes, I uh, did fix the problem. Um, not just temporarily, yet. even the colors now are even, I think, even more saturated and uh, just pop even more. Uh, it's hard to film this, obviously, but uh, I really like the look of this right now. Uh, and to confirm that it is working, uh, I did wiggle the cable uh, and this no longer caused uh, a loss of color curve. So this, this little bit of wiggle right before would, uh, would, would cause issues and doing that now, it's, it's totally stable. We're not seeing the problem anymore. So that is yet another fix, uh, a connector fix. We didn't replace any components. All we did was uh, refill the solders and it fixed the problem. Um, yeah, I like those fix. They're in my budget. There you go, Kraz the genius uh, can fix just about anything that is fixable and he did not disappoint in this video. So we got a working CRT TV pretty much as good as new uh, from, from 1986. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hope you learned some stuff about CRT TVs and about just repairing things and testing components in general. Uh, once again, retro toilet, you flush it, we fix it. We turn your retro crap into retro gold. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Uh, you know what? This one's dumb. Dump it. Trash it. This one's garbage.